fill. But I walked up the steps and I peeked in the door. And the devil said, don't you go in. I said, it won't hurt me, I'll just step inside. Now sit as far back as I can. But something got a hold of me. That something got a hold of me. I went there to fight, but oh my, that night, God surely got a hold of me. Well, they sang like a minute, they all clapped their hands. I said, it's commotion, that's all. When they get down, down and pray, I'll just get up and leave, for I don't want to be seen here at all. But about that time he got started to preach, and he looked right straight down at me. He told everybody how evil I was. Didn't talk like he thought much of me, but something got a hold of me. Yes, something got a hold of me. I went there in spite, but oh my, that night, God surely got a hold of me. Well, I sat in my seat just thinking it over, and then they all started to pray. The fire fell from heaven, and I knelt to the floor. I prayed there, and God had his way. But now that I know that I don't need to doubt, for I got an experience at night, I'll never forget it as long as I live. I found that salvation was right. Y'all, something got a hold of me. That something got a hold of me. I went there to fight, but oh my, that night, God surely got a hold of me. Amen. Amen. Lord, to be saved tonight. <clears throat> I'll sing thank you, Lord. When I stop to count my blessings, it's easy, Lord, to see I'm blessed beyond measure. you sure been good to me. And I know I don't deserve it And in your debt I'll always be So I'd like to take this moment Down on bended knees To say thank you From the bottom of my heart Lord, I'll praise you For how wonderful you are and if it takes eternity, that wouldn't be enough to find a way and time to say thank you. So often I take for granted the blessings you bestow. I don't want to seem ungrateful. Lord, I want you to know that I pledge my life to you and I'm longing for that day when I can bow in your presence and there my crown I'll lay and say thank you from the bottom of my heart. Lord, I'll praise you how wonderful you are and it takes eternity that wouldn't be enough to find a way and a time to say thank you when my heart is feeling burdened you're the joy that floods my soul Without you I'd be nothing, but 
through your blood I'm made whole. Help me share your love with others. Each and every day I see my loss led to Jesus. And I bow on that day and say thank you. From the bottom of my heart, Lord, I'll praise you for how wonderful you are. And if it takes eternity, that wouldn't be enough to find a way and time to say thank you. Praise the Lord. I've been thinking a lot here lately about, uh, I guess, life. And uh, I haven't mentioned a whole lot to, to anybody, and probably I don't know if I, I should now, but uh, I'm having something go on with my health and things, and you know, you start having thoughts of what it could be. And, well, got to thinking about uh, eternity a lot more here lately, and yeah. I've never been one to be fearful, I guess, and I don't say that boastfully, because I know that fear can overcome people, oh, yeah. and uh, it, it torments them, and yeah. it's hard for them to, to find any peace from it. But uh, I found something that, that scared me. That was the thought of going to hell. Yeah. Into a place that I'd never be able to escape from. Uh -huh. With all that eternity. All, all that torment for all of eternity. Yeah. So, uh, like I said, my mind's made up Amen. to go to heaven. Yeah. And I start thinking about what heaven will be like, though, for the rest of eternity. And all I know is if I can escape the darkness that tries to come against our minds. And I know we're going to see Jesus. And I know that he comforts us here. So I wonder what feeling of comfort and love and peace are we going to feel there? It's just going to be, it is, I mean, so overwhelming throughout all eternity. Just to be bathed in love, peace, joy. Oh, I'm so thankful for that. I'm going to heaven one of these days, and I encourage each one here make sure. Yeah, press home. Amen. 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 I thank him for all of his goodness and his mercy. I thank him for his saving grace. For, for, the, for the many times that I haven't seen him, but I've felt him. Amen. Because I know he's always there. Oh, yeah. All I got to do is call upon him whenever, when, when life gets dark all around you. Talking about darkness earlier. When, light, when, when this world looks so dark, you see no way out. It reminded me of the children of Israel right before they came out of bondage. Before the Lord killed the firstborn of all of them. Right before that. They had three days of thick darkness in the land of Egypt. Right. Uh, they couldn't see anything. They couldn't see their hand. The Bible says they didn't even get out of bed. They didn't, they didn't do nothing for three days because it was so dark. Fear fell upon them Amen. because it was so dark. But it also says, but the children of Israel 
They had light in their dwelling. They were not dark. They were not living in the dark. They were living in the light, the light of Jesus Christ. And I thank him because we can live in that light. And we know he's soon coming. We're going to try to sing. We're coming back. We're going to try to sing he's coming back on the next cloud. Because I believe he's coming back any moment, any day. On the next cloud passing by What a day when we behold his face on high Soon he's coming down to claim his bride All dressed in spotless white And he may be on the next cloud passing by As a child I watch the clouds reveal the faces of my dreams then the wind would shift and move them from my side. There's a face I'm still looking for and I won't be surprised. Should I see him on the next cloud passing by? He may be on the next cloud passing by. What a day when we behold his face on high. Coming down to claim his bride, all dressed in spotless white, and he may be on the next cloud passing by. It's closer now than you would ever think or comprehend. Even a fool should know we're so near this life set. Better make your list and check it twice as the midnight hour chimes. Cause he may be on the next cloud passing by. He may be on the next cloud passing by. What a day when we behold his face on high. Soon he's coming down to claim his bride, all dressed in spotless white. And he may be on the next cloud passing by. Coming down to claim his bride, all dressed in spotless white, and he may be on the next cloud passing by. Yeah, I really believe that. I really believe that. Well, if he does, I'm glad I'm ready. Uh, amen. I'm glad Jesus is my everything. Amen. Whatever it is you need tonight, he's your everything. Amen. Goliath had to have a man go in front of him and carry his shield, but Jesus said, I'll be yours. People spend millions of dollars trying to get a good doctor, and there ain't nothing wrong with them, but when it comes to a great physician, Jesus said, I'll be him. Amen. Good to see you in the Lord's house tonight. If you have your Bibles, turn with me to the book of 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy chapter number 1. It is an honor to have you with us tonight. Appreciate uh, Brother Steve and Sister Frida Bishop, uh, the missionaries that we support. We appreciate them being with us. I feel like the Lord would have us uh, to say just a few words tonight. If you're here tonight and you're lost, uh, you're our honored guest. Appreciate you being here. Amen. I uh, uh, hope you don't leave that way. Amen. God been good to you? Amen. Thank you for being here. Please pray for me just a few moments. I won't be before you very long. Amen. I, I spoke with uh, some of the men this morning about what the Lord had laid upon my heart. And I thought I'd preach this this morning. And, and uh, the Lord just went another direction. And, and uh, so uh, uh, you pray for us that God would help us just a little bit. Amen. I'll, uh, I'll begin reading in verse number 6 of 2 Timothy chapter number 1. Some good reading. And there's a few words in here that I've, I've asked several people on how to say. And my wife said, you can say it this way or that way. And Johnny said, say it this way. And so I'll probably just say it my way. And it probably won't be the right way, but I'll say it. Amen. Verse number 6. Wherefore, I put thee in remembrance that thou stir up the gift of God, which is in thee by the putting on of my hands. 
For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me, his prisoner. But be thou partaker of the afflictions of the gospel according to the power of God, who hath saved us and called us with an holy calling, not according to our works, but according to His own purpose and grace, which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began, but is now made manifest by the appearing of our Savior Jesus Christ, who hath abolished death, and hath brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. Whereunto I am appointed a preacher and an apostle and a teacher of the Gentiles. For this which cause I also suffer these things. Nevertheless, I am not ashamed, for I know whom I have believed, and am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. Hold fast the form of sound words which thou hast heard of me in faith and love which is in Christ Jesus. The good thing which was committed unto thee keep by the Holy Ghost which dwelleth in us. This thou knowest that all they which are in Asia be turned away from me of whom are somebody help me right there. Yeah. And Hermogenes. Now listen to this verse right here. The Lord give mercy unto the house of, say that again, Onesiphorus. For he oft refreshed me and was not ashamed of my chain. But when he was in Rome, he sought me out very diligently and found me. The Lord grant unto him that he may find mercy of the Lord in that day and in how many things he ministered unto me at Ephesus thou knowest very well. May God bless you for standing. I know that's right smarter reading. Amen. But I, that's just good reading. Sometimes I glean, a, I glean a thought or a phrase out of a scripture but it's really hard to find a place to start reading when the reading is so good. I appreciate the Word of the Lord. Don't you? Amen. I appreciate the Word of God. Whenever you're having a bad day, amen, you can open the Word of God. And in the Word of God, amen, there's joy, there's encouragement, there's everything you need in the Word of God. Amen. But I want to preach from this little phrase in verse number 16. And I don't know why the Lord would have me, amen, to preach this, amen, but I want to. And uh, the Word of God said, And he was not ashamed of my chain. But when he was in Rome, he sought me out very diligently and found me. But now, the way I read the Scripture now, that here is Paul uh, in prison, and he spent a lot of his time and a lot of his ministry in prison. He wrote a lot of the Bible that we read behind bars. Amen. But he didn't let it get him down to the point to where he complained about God. Amen. He always had the church in mind when he put the pen, amen, to the piece of paper or had somebody else to write it. Amen. Paul knew that he had a mission to fulfill and he knew that he was right where God wanted him. Amen. And God knew that somewhere down the road and some 2,000 years later, that men, women, boys and girls could read the letters that was pinned down and find help and encouragement when they get in the places that they get in. Amen. Can I say again, I appreciate the word of the Lord. Amen. It's a, it's a light under my path. It's everything that I need, Isaiah. Praise the Lord. But here's this man and amen, I'll probably fumble about saying his name so I just won't say it. Amen. But this man, he thought about and he cared about Paul. Amen. And he looked him up. Now as long as the ministry was going good and as long as people was getting uh, saved and as long as people was getting healed, amen, there was all kinds of people following him around. Same thing about Jesus. As long as they was getting fed with loaves and fishes and people
people that was raised from the dead and their eyes was open. Amen. And their ears was open. He had all kinds of people following him around. Amen. But when it come time, he said to eat my flesh and drink my blood. They all walked away. Amen. Except for the disciples. And he said, will you also go away? But I love what Peter said. He said, where shall we go? For thou hast the words of eternal life. Hallelujah. Amen. Now here's Paul. Amen. When the ministry took a turn and he was in the prison, no doubt, Brother Homer. Amen. That uh, the crowd kind of went away. Amen. But here was one man uh, that sought him out. Amen. And he said he was not ashamed of my chain. Hallelujah. I want to preach about Jesus a little bit tonight. Amen. I, I won't keep you long, but I'm glad, Brother Bob. Amen. It don't matter what you've done or where you've been. I'm glad. Hallelujah. Do you remember where you was? I preach along some of these lines a lot. Amen. But now there's some of you that was a long ways down sin's road. Amen. Sin had taken you a long way. It's a miracle and amazing to me that you did what you done and you lived through it all. Amen. I say amazing grace. How sweet to sound. That saved a wretch like me. Amen. If the devil had had his way, you'd have died down yonder in the hog pen of the world and you wouldn't have no chance but thank God I'm glad that there's a God that holds life in the palm of his hand amen the devil can't take your life amen the God gives life and he gives it more abundantly I'm glad a many a time if the devil could have took my life I wouldn't be here tonight but hallelujah God kept giving me chance after chance he gave you chance after chance and I'm glad I hate it to the call thank God and I'm so glad Jesus was not a Shame of the chain I was in. Amen. Some of you wound up. I'm going to go another direction here in a minute. Amen. But you help me just a minute. Amen. I'm glad, Brother Homer, that the chain that had you bound, amen, it was beyond man's reach. Amen. Man couldn't help you. I said man couldn't help you. They can send you to all these things that man has conjured up. And they try to help you and they do the best that they can. Amen. But they can't do nothing but get in your head. Amen. They can try to change your mind but they ain't but one source hallelujah uh, that can change your heart amen do you remember when the Holy Ghost uh, came to where you was hallelujah I read about uh, Jesus getting weary with his journey and he sat down on Jacob's well amen here come a lady to draw water a Samaritan a half breed somebody that had been married five times and living with a man that was not her husband amen Jesus knew she was coming that's why he sat down down there but he was not ashamed of her chain amen he knew that woman needed help and he was the answer I said he was the answer ain't she glad he didn't turn you away he sat down in your path one day and he waited for you to come by as wicked as you was as low down as you was he wasn't ashamed of your chain and he said I am the one that can unloose the chain and set you free hallelujah I want to say thank God I am free tonight I'm not bound with a chain of sin no more he set me free and I'm glad of it hallelujah amen here they come bringing a woman caught in a very act of adultery amen they said now the law says and it did say a woman caught in a very act of adultery should be stoned he knew the law, but he was trying to trip him up in his talk. But you can't trip him up. Hallelujah. Amen. He just stooped down and started writing in the sand. Just like he didn't even hear a word that they said. Here they come with a woman bound with a chain of sin. Amen. Caught in the very act of adultery. Amen. But Jesus come not into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Hallelujah. He, didn't, he knew, amen, what the law said. He knew if he'd have given the go ahead, they'd have laid the stones to her. But he didn't open his mouth. Amen. He stooped and rode in the sand. And then he raised back up and said, He that's without sown a sin, let him cast the first stone. And one by one, to the eldest, to the youngest, they dropped their stone and walked away. And there he stood with just him and her. Hallelujah. Ain't you glad? Amen. Whenever he gets you one on one and lets you know I love you. Hallelujah. Regardless of the change. That's got you bound. I love you 
anyway. Where's thine accusers? She said, I have none. He said, neither do I condemn thee. Whoa, hallelujah. Go and sin no more. Hallelujah. Ain't you glad? Thank God, regardless of how bad it is, he still loves you. He'll still set you free. Amen. He ain't ashamed of the chain that's got you. He come to turn you loose. Hallelujah. Amen. He said, when that man come to Rome, he searched me out diligently. Has anybody seen Paul? Last time I seen him, he was going there. He'd go there. Anybody seen Paul? Hallelujah. Finally, he found him, and he found him. Searched him out even in his, even in his chain. Thank God. I'm glad, Sister Mary. Woo, hallelujah. That the Holy Ghost, God, uh, searched me out and found me. That night in an old-fashioned church, amen, I'd get up and run out the door. I never did do a lot of wickedness, but I was lost. Amen, that altar call to come. I'd run out the door and run to the bathroom and hide and wait till it was over with. But that night, hallelujah, I loved that song that you sung, Brother Bob. Amen. Something got a hold of me. Amen. I said something got a hold of me. And do you remember when it got a hold of you? It searched you out and it found you. It come through all the people in the church, all the people in the world, and sat down right beside you and said, I found you. Amen. I'm not here to condemn you, but I'm here to love you and save you. Do you remember when he took the key? He said, I've got the keys. Amen. He set you free. Hallelujah. He wasn't ashamed of you. He brought you in his family and made you one of his own children. Hallelujah. Now let's turn this record over. Even after you get saved, the devil haunts my mind with never being good enough. He binds our mind with chains of discouragement and chains of not being good enough. He binds your mind to thinking I'll never be what I could be. But He loves you in spite of that chain. He's not ashamed of that chain. They, some people can run a mile, never get a hard breath. And then there's other people, and I'm not just picking on you, that's bound with the chain of affliction. That the devil fights in their mind. It says if you was like him, you could do this. But I want you to know, he ain't ashamed of that chain. Oh, if you'll let God use you and accept, I want a healing. And I know God can heal you, and I pray to God He does. How many of you says, I know He can? I know He can. Amen. If that's what God wants to do, amen. But He'll be able to reach people that I want. Amen. The devil tells you, amen. He's got me bound. I can't do nothing. But yes, you can. He said, Open your mouth and I'll fill it. Hallelujah. Let me tell you, God's still God. He said, God's still God. He said, I'll not share my glory with another. Amen. Don't let the devil tell you you ain't good enough. God made you. He knows how you are. Amen. He'll use you just like you are if you won't bow down to the chains of discouragement. Amen. Amen. If I could be like Johnny, I could quote more Bible. If God had wanted me to be like Johnny, he wouldn't have made me. Amen. I listened to you teach the other night, and I'm like, man, I wish I could teach like that. God said, you ain't Joe. There's a whole lot of young preachers looked up to, looks up to elderly people. And I'm nothing. But there's been people looking up at me and said, I wish I could preach like you. I said, why? God wants John to be John. God wants Bob to be Bob. Don't try to reach up to a bar of something that you think I have when you don't know what goes on behind closed doors at the house. That devil fights me. That devil comes against me. Does he do that to anybody? I said, does he do that to anybody? Amen. Be who you are. Amen. I know if you're to the point to where you don't think you're anything, you're to the point to where God can use you. When you think you can do it, you can't do it. Amen. You might be able to do it, but it's like a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. But if you trust in Him... I said if you trust in Him, hallelujah, He'll help you. He'll be everything you need and a whole lot more. Amen. The devil tries to tell some preachers, you're nothing because you don't preach as many revivals. 
If you was a preacher, you ought to be. You'd be pastor in a church somewhere. I know his tricks. Your mind gets wound up with that chain. So far to the point to where we get so wound till we get so wore out. Come on now. We get so wore out, Bob, of thinking we're not good enough until the experience that God wants you to have in your life goes right by. Because you're so tangled up in that chain in your mind till it passes you right by. But if you'll come to the point to where you say, God, now I just want you all to know I got ADD really bad. Donna Johnny. Or something. I don't know what you call it. I don't know what you call it. I say, God, I, don't, I wish I could be like him, but you made me like I am. And help me to be satisfied with who I am. So many times we say, I wish I could sing like him and I'd have a better ministry. If I'd, quit, if I'd let God bless him and use what God give me, then I could be more effective instead of trying to be like everybody else instead of just being me. Amen. Be yourself, John. Be yourself, Bob. You know, I love you being Bob. I love you being Homer. You ever seen somebody try to be somebody else? Don't be fake. Don't be fake. Live for Jesus. I love Taylor for being Taylor. So don't try to be somebody else. I've tried to be other people. It's miserable. It's miserable. Hey, some of you here tonight, you may be wound up in that thing in your mind thinking, I'm never going to be good enough. You see, you can't be good enough in your own self. You'll never attain to it. The thing is, is when you yield yourself in His hand, He makes you what He wants you to be. Some folks don't sing and can't sing. Is it because God's forgot you? No. But there's things you can do that I can't do. But it's not because what you do, God loves you any greater than He loves me. We're all in this body. I didn't think this was going to go this way. We're all in this body together. And the ear can't say to the foot, I have no need of thee. Because God fitly joins it together. And at the end of the day, Brother Taylor, if I can just be the little toe or the little toenail, I don't care. But as long as I'm hooked into the body, the blood flow, the same blood that comes up here to my face, to my head, everything that you look at goes to the hidden parts. That somebody said, I don't even know what all them parts is for. Why you got them for? The same blood goes to all of them. You may say, I, I can't do nothing. I don't do nothing. Amen. Can you say I'm in the body because I feel the flow? Hallelujah. So be content being where God puts you. And when he feels the need to scoot you up and put you in the light, he will. If you put yourself in the light, it'll burn you up. But if you're, he puts you in the light, amen, you'll know it ain't about you. It's all about him. And all about him is where I want to be. God help us not to be tangled up in the chain of our own mind. Before he begins to play. You here tonight? You say, I'm hung up in a lot of things and I'm ashamed to talk about it. You say, he ain't ashamed of your chain because he knows where you're at. Brother Daniel, I've never heard you give you testimony of who you used to be, but when I start talking about certain things is when you, amen, the loudest. So you must have been pretty far down there. But ain't you glad Jesus don't do background checks? I'm talking about wound up in sin. You ever seen anything caught in barbed wire? I've seen a horse caught in barbed wire. He couldn't move. Cut. Just standing there trembling. Somebody that knows what they're doing, little by little, can cut until it can go free. You see, sin will leave you wounded and beaten and bruised, tangled up in sin. But there is a God that can bring you out. Nobody said you wouldn't have scars. 
that you can say, I am free. If you're here tonight, you're lost, let's all stand to our feet. You're here tonight and you say, Preacher, I'd like for Jesus to set me free. He will. I mean, that's what He does. That's what He does. That's what He specializes in. Setting people free. If that's you tonight, buddy, I'd get in this altar and just have a one-on-one talk with Jesus. Where's He at? Sitting at the right hand of the Father. He's got His ear turned your way. And all He's asking for you to do is just say, Lord, I'm sorry for who I am. Will you save me? And He'll forgive you and change you. It's just that simple. When you're as sorry for where you're at and want to change, He'll change you and turn you around. I feel like I talk to people in this building tonight. I talk to my own self. Some of you is wound up in the chain of your mind thinking you'll never be good enough. And sometimes you get so discouraged to the point to where you feel like quitting because you can't be somebody that's thinking the same way about you. You see, they may, be want, they may want to be you. And you may want to be them. You can't be them. They can't be you. You get so discouraged because you ain't got their ministry. You don't need their ministry. You need yours. If you're here tonight and you say, Preacher, that's me. I don't feel like it. I'm good enough. You know who that is telling you that, right? It's the devil. Because Jesus thinks everybody is well able. Joshua and Caleb said, Hey, don't say that. Don't say that. I know these giants, but we're well able to take it. Well able. David said, You come to me of the sword and the spear, but I come in the name of the Lord. The battle's the Lord's. You can't fight him. You're a ruddy youth. He said, Oh, but no, hang on. I'm not going in myself. I'm going in God. I can't be Saul. I done tried his armor on. I can't be him. I'm just going to be David. Well, then what are you going to fight with? Slingshot. Oh, boy, we're in for it now. Now, wait a minute. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I got God. God's good at throwing rocks. Making them go right where they're supposed to go. If you're here tonight and you say that devil's been fighting me and I know I'm talking, talking to somebody. I talk to myself. If you're a church member and say, the devil's been fighting my mind. I just want to come and let the devil know tonight I'm just going to be me and try to do the best I can to live for God. If that's you tonight, just come and talk to the Lord. Just thank Him. Thank Him for making you just like you. So let God use you for being you. Get as close to Him as you can and live for Jesus. Hallelujah. Other people need to pray. You may be here tonight and you're lost and you need Jesus. Just come up here to this altar and ask Him to save you, change you, cleanse you, set you free. He ain't ashamed of that chain. He'll come right in the midst of all of it and get you loose. See, what's got you bound won't bind Him because He's already passed the test and defeated it on the cross. He'll set you free and put you in His family. Anybody else tonight need to pray? Let's pray together, church. Lord, in Jesus' name, I appreciate you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God, for this church. Thank you for every person.